halogens, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine, are very good at oxidizing the crap out of things. There is a special case known as the haloform reaction, where halogens oxidize molecules known as methyl ketones. A methyl ketone contains a carbon-oxygen double bond with a CH3 methyl group attached on at least one side. I think this reaction is best explained by example, so here we go. Methyl ketone used in this reaction is acetone, found in nail polish remover. Because it's slightly less nasty than the other halogens, I used iodine in this reaction. Here you see a concentrated solution of iodine and acetone, which gives it the brown color. Water is added. The products we care about for this reaction is not very soluble in water, so adding water helps it precipitate, whereas the other major products will be more soluble in water than acetone, keeping our products separate. The reaction is promoted by base, so I add concentrated sodium hydroxide solution. To avoid adding too much, I add a little at a time, swirling in between. I decided to edit out some of the process for time. The whole thing took about four minutes. You see the mixture gradually get lighter as a yellow precipitate starts forming. Eventually, the iodine color disappears entirely and a light yellow powder remains at the bottom. You may also see the white stir bar, which I originally used to dissolve the iodine. So what happened here? First, the three hydrogens on the methyl group were each replaced by iodine, making this compound. Then the hydroxide from the base replaced that halogenated carbon. Last, the hydrogen on this new carboxylic acid transfers to the triiodomethanide ion that we just formed, making acetate and iodoform. Iodoform has the same structure as the more famous chloroform, just with iodine replacing chlorine. Unlike the clear liquid chloroform, however, iodoform, as can be seen after it is separated, from the reaction is a yellow solid. Iodoform also has a strong smell similar to that of a hospital. In fact, iodoform is sometimes used as a disinfectant. It can be a bit harder to do this reaction with chlorine as it is a gas and harder to control, but it can be substituted with certain chlorine-containing molecules. Let's keep using acetone, but we'll replace the iodine with bleach, which has the active ingredient sodium hypochlorites. The mechanism of the reaction shows that chlorine is transferred from the hypochlorite to replace the hydrogens. The next step, however, is the same, where the hydroxide replaces the chlorinated carbon, and then an acid-base reaction creates chloroform and sodium acetates. Being a liquid, the chloroform is mixed in with remaining acetone and is less noticeable. Separating the chloroform is a more time-consuming procedure than it is with iodoform. This doesn't just work with acetone, however. It works with any methyl ketone, even something crazy like this. Anything easily oxidized to a methyl ketone, such as isopropyl alcohol, which can be oxidized to acetone. And then it also works with ethanol and ethanol. In organic chemistry, the haloform reaction serves two purposes. Using iodine, one can test to see if a product contains a methyl ketone by seeing if iodoform is made. It is also used to turn methyl ketones into organic acids. A little disclaimer, this reaction can produce some nasty products and byproducts. So don't try anything stupid like making your own chloroform. The fumes of this can be really irritating to your eyes, throats, and sinuses. If you attempt this reaction, be sure you know what you're doing. By the way, I'm sorry I missed Facepalm Friday last week. I was really busy taking finals. Rest assured, it will return this week.